The next fun thing that you can do to modify layers that I'd like to show you is the liquify filter. The liquify filter is an interesting option available in photo to Photoshop users. It can be used to create purposeful, funky textures in a design or to even retouch an image. And so in chapter or in a previous lecture on retouching, uh, we talked about retouching in various ways, but we didn't talk about the liquify filter, so this can add to your retouching skill set. And so to launch the liquify filter, it's actually a dialog box where you can make a lot of adjustments. You'll go to the filter menu and then choose liquify. Once you have chosen to liquify the image via a filter, a dialog box will appear and you can make lots of adjustments inside this box. I'm not going to go into all the specific details, I'm just going to show you a couple key things. Um, but if you find yourself really enjoying this, um, I will post additional videos on how to get um, to go dive deeper into the subject of liquify. And so in this first example, I have a twirl clockwise tool selected. And so it's the fourth tool down on the left hand side. And so you can't see it, it's zoomed out right here. So I've zoomed it in a little bit. It looks like, um, kind of looks like a cyclone or a hurricane that you'd see on a weather map. And so in this example, I, I've taken a windmill that was not moving and I kind of warped it and made it kind of look funky like it was almost spinning. And you can see that the original image was very straight and structured. And just really quickly, I warped it a little bit using a liquify filter, and it almost makes it look like it's dancing. And so you could use this to create like an animated GIF. And so you could have three or four different versions, and it could look like maybe it's blowing in the wind. The, this is another example of the twirl uh, option. And so this is twirling clockwise, so this is the twirl clockwise tool. And so if I just push and click with that tool, it will twirl the image, it will spin it, and it will spin it clockwise. But this is an example where I took an image and I was trying to make it kind of funky and, and creepy and stylized. But if I continue to twirl everything clockwise, it will almost look like it's a big circle. And so what I did was I bounced back and forth between twirling it clockwise and counterclockwise. And even though it's called the twirl clockwise tool, if you push and hold the option or the alt key on a PC, um, it will change the direction of the twirl being applied. And so I bounced it back and forth to make it look like a funky stylized design. The pucker tool within the liquify dialog box can be used to make things look more slender. And so I am going to use a sheep in this example, but a lot of times the pucker tool is used when we're retouching photographs or portraits to make people look skinnier than they actually are. And so if you use the pucker tool, which is right below the, the clockwise spin tool, um, you can make the sheep look thinner. And so this sheep is much thinner than it actually is. If we look at the original, it's a nice puffy sheep with a thick uh, coat of a wool. And I used the pucker tool to make the sheep look like it was skinnier than it actually is. The bloat tool can be used to make things look bigger than they are. When applied correctly, it can make things look like they were captured with a fisheye lens. And I spelled lens wrong, so I'll have to fix that typo. Or increase the size of elements within the image. This is often used to make eyes look slightly larger in portraits because um, I don't want to get too much into the, the details of doing portrait editing because the advanced Photoshop class, Photoshop for Photographers, is all about that kind of thing. But aesthetically, we are kind of prone to thinking people with bigger eyes are more attractive. And so if somebody's eyes are small in a picture, you can make them slightly larger and then they'll appear to be more attractive. Um, the bloat tool in this example with the fries, I wanted it to look kind of in your face and blown up and, and maybe it's an advertisement for the french fries. If we look at the original on the left hand side, the fries aren't that big, but if I use the bloat tool, it almost looks like the image was captured with a different lens, like a fisheye lens or something like that, that would make the french fries look bigger and in your face and kind of more impactful for whatever the finished product I'm going for is. I also use a liquify filter on, on this image here so you can see how it can be done subtly. And so I bloated this image too, but instead of bloating the entire thing, which would make the entire steeple look like it was rounded, I bloated the statue at the top and I bloated the steeple and I bloated the round part, I don't know what it would be called, right here. And so I wanted it to look bigger and it's just subtly bigger, but I was able to subtly make it bigger by applying the bloat tool multiple times instead of just one once and making it all bigger at once. 
And the last example I want to show you before I jump over to Photoshop is this example here. And so on the left hand side is the original image and this is not available in our stock imagery. Um, I pulled it off of the Creative Commons to use for this example. And you can see that the model on the left hand side, um, it's a good picture but I very subtly made some changes to it on the right hand side which make her look slightly more attractive or appealing for, for the layout or whatever. And so I made her eyes slightly bigger and her lips slightly bigger and even her hair. I think the biggest difference you can notice is in her hair. Her hair looks, I think, to me her hair looks better because it looks like it's more, it's more full, it has more body to it now. But I made her ponytail look slightly bigger so that it doesn't look as flat as in the original image. Um, again, I would, I would caution you to be careful when you're retouching, especially when you're retouching people and making them look like what they don't look like in real life. Um, you want to make subtle changes. You don't want someone who weighs 500 pounds to look like they weigh 200 pounds or somebody who weighs 110 pounds to look like they weigh 200 pounds. Like, you don't want to blow things out, but if, you know, if making subtle changes improve the composition of the picture, then you can make the retouching subtly. So let's jump back to Photoshop and I'll show you how I did these examples. And so this is my first image. Always duplicate your background layer. You don't want to destroy what you're doing. Um, you can select a layer and choose filter and then choose liquify. You could also, we already learned about this, we can create a smart object first and then we can choose filter and then liquify. And now the changes would be non-destructive because I can always go back and edit them. The tool that I'm going to choose to use first is this twirl clockwise tool. It's the fourth one down on the tools panel that's available to you inside the liquify dialog box. And then you get a brush and the size of your brush will affect the change. And so right now if I just push and hold, the longer I hold the more it will spin. And the spin only occurs inside the circle of the brush. And so if I wanted to make the entire windmill look like it's moving, I definitely want to have a bigger brush. And so I'm going to use my right bracket key to make it really big. And then I do not, that's probably too big, I do not want to overdo this. And so I'm just going to push it once. And if it's not enough, I'll push it again. But you definitely don't want to push and hold because it will keep spinning on you. And it will eventually warp out of control. And so when you're doing this, slow and steady, kind of do a little bit at a time and make, try to make subtle changes. And so it doesn't look too distorted, but it's definitely different than, than the original. Okay. So this is my second image and we're going to use that same option. If we go, let's duplicate the layer and we'll go ahead and make it a smart object. Now if I go to filter and liquify, I'm going to use that same tool. I'm going to use the clockwise um, twirl tool here. I'm going to let it twirl clockwise, right, to make subtle changes. But eventually I'm going to want to twirl an opposite direction or everything's going to look the same. And so if I hold down the option key and I twirl, notice how the twirl goes a different direction now. And so I can twirl the shoes back and forth to my liking until I create enough warp in the picture that I could go on with whatever the next stage in my process would be. Maybe I'm trying to make something look Halloweeny and creepy and so I'm going to apply some filters or some color overlays so this looks dark and creepy and maybe it's going to be a background texture for something. The french fries I'm going to use the bloat option and so we'll do the same thing again. We can duplicate the layer. I'll make it a smart object. And then if we choose filter and liquify, this time we need to change the tool that we're using. And so over here on the left hand side, you want to make sure, I'm going to skip over the pucker tool and go to the bloat tool. Um, the bloat tool will make things look bigger. And so if I was to push and hold, just like on the previous tool, it will constantly get bigger and it will only occur inside the circle or the brush size. And so now it kind of looks like a spoon and that kind of worked better than I was anticipating. I was going to show you a bad example, but if, you, uh, if, you're, if you're changing the size of something, it's only inside of the circle. And so it will eventually look distorted and out of place. And so if I wanted to make all of the fries look bigger, I would want to have a bigger uh, circle or brush size before I start. And then again, you just want to make subtle changes. You don't want them to look too big. And so maybe I can go bigger here and make the whole thing look bigger. And so slow and steady is kind of my motto on that. And you want to make them look 
stylized but not distorted to the point where people are spending more time concerned with how weird and distorted it looks than looking at the actual french fries. And so in this example you can see how I blew it up and I distorted it, but maybe that's what I was looking for or the look I was going for for an advertisement that I was going to work on. Now let's talk about the pucker tool. And so the pucker tool I used on this sheep, well I haven't used it yet, but in the example I used it on the sheep. If we duplicate our layer and make it a smart object. Um, if we go to the filter menu and liquify, and this time I'm going to choose the fifth, oops, that's way too zoomed in, the fifth tool down, which is the pucker tool. You can use the pucker tool to make things smaller. And so I'm going to do it on their backside right here, and you can see that it will constantly, if I just keep holding it, it will pucker in, which appears to make things look smaller. And so if I wanted to make the sheep look smaller, I'm just going to click once. I'm not going to click and hold, but I could pucker different parts of the sheep until the sheep appears to be smaller. And you want to make sure that the, the middle of your circle where you're clicking is inside the area where you want to come inward. And so in this case, I want the sheep to come inward and look smaller towards the inside. And so you don't want to, you don't want to have it over here because it's going to pucker to the outside. It's actually going to make the sheep look wider. See, I'm, I'm holding it so you can see where it's pulling towards, it's pulling towards the center of your selection. And so I just want to make sure that when I click, I'm clicking somewhere on the sheep and it will make the sheep look skinnier. I'm going to kind of keep doing it so it's noticeably different when we go back, like its head smaller. And so now when I select OK, if we compare it to the original, you can see that the, the sheep looks much smaller in the second version. Okay, the last thing I want to show you is the image of the scroll. And so we're going to we're going to combine a couple of the things that we just did. We're going to use the pucker to make certain things look smaller on her, and we can use the bloat to make them look bigger. And so just like the other examples, let's go ahead and duplicate the layer and then make it a smart object. And now if we choose filter and liquify, uh, we can make some adjustments to her. And so one of the examples that I used was making her eyes slightly bigger. And so you want to be really careful because you could very easily make something look cartoonish. In our class, um, depending on the semester, one of the project options is to um, create a caricature that you paint. And so you could use Liquify to make the features on someone look bigger and kind of cartoony and blown out of proportion. And then you could use the mixer brush tool to paint over it so it looks hand painted. And so you may want to use this to make it look distorted. But if you were retouching this image because you wanted to use it in a project or it was going to go in a magazine or something, you wouldn't want her eyeball to be so big that it looks cartoonish. But maybe if you were doing a project where you had to make somebody look cartoonish, that is something that you would do. And so I'm going to undo that. But if I want to make her eyes look slightly bigger, I'm just going to click once and make them slightly, slightly bigger than they were to begin with. And so as long as they're only slightly different, you're not going to notice um, in this example. But when I compare it to the original, you'll say, oh, there's something a little bit different about that. You can also make her lips look bigger. And so um, that's a, a popular thing is to have plump lips. And so you could plump up her lips a little bit so they're bigger in our version. Um, you could, I made her hair look bigger. And so I just kind of went like this to her hair until it blew up and was more puffy. And then she doesn't need this, but if you wanted to, you could also make aspects of her smaller. And so if you thought her ears were too big, which they are not, you could use the pucker tool to kind of make her ears a little bit smaller. Or you could bring in her neck a little bit if, make sure you pull in when you do that, if her neck was a little more fat than you think it should be. But she definitely doesn't need that. And I'm only showing you that so that you can see. You could change the, the angle of her jawline. You could bring her jaw in if you thought that her jaw was too broad. And you can do some, some relatively easy retouching here. Again, I know you're probably sick of hearing me say it. It's subtlety is key. You don't want to make somebody look like something that they're not. And so you still want this model to look like she is herself. You just want to, I guess, fix some imperfections or some perceived imperfections that you may not um, want in the final product. And so now if we compare the change to the original, 
you can see the original is fine, but the change is just slightly different. Her eyes are slightly bigger. And so you may, like I don't like what I did to her, her chin line or her neck, but I think that her, making her eyes slightly bigger makes it look, she looks more friendly with her eyes bigger. Okay, that wraps up this section of the lecture. I would like you to give the liquify um, filter a try. And so I'd like you to experiment with doing it as a stylized effect like we did for the windmill, but also try it for retouching like we did with the sheep or with, you'll have to Google your own picture for, um, to retouch the model. But either way, I want you to give both a shot. I want you to practice liquify to do something cool and stylized, but also to do it in a subtle way that makes the image look slightly different and more impactful overall, but you don't inherently say that has been retouched. When you're done with that, you can move on to the rest of the content in this module. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to email your instructor at the email address listed on the course syllabus.